Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Call of the Weird, Travels in American Subcultures by Louis Theroux. So this is like a kind of a revisit of um, what he did in Weird Weekends. He goes back to visit everybody. It's his first book, um, but I mean the guy's a journalist so he can write pretty well, you know. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... For over 10 years, Louis Theroux has been making programs about offbeat characters on the fringes of US society. Now he returns to America and attempts to track down some of the people who have most fascinated him over the years, trying to discover what motivates them, why they believe the things they believe, and what has happened to the assorted dreamers, outlaws and eccentrics since he last saw them. On a journey that takes him to the porn sets of Los Angeles, among the UFO contactees of Arizona, and up to far northern Idaho for a festive get-together of leading neo-Nazis, he asks what weird people have to tell us about our own secret natures. Has he learned anything about himself by being among them? Do we choose our beliefs or do our beliefs choose us? Louis Theroux's first book is a hilarious, thought-provoking and at times surreal voyage into the heart of weirdness. And you know me, I love weird things. We get a reference to uh, David Icke who was what he was. He was a Coventry City goalkeeper who reinvented himself as a New Age prophet. And I read this just after Queen Elizabeth died and that was interesting because of this little reference. Doesn't he believe there are 12 foot lizard people running the planet? I asked. He believes the reptilian people have an agenda here, that's correct, said Daryl, a success coach from Las Vegas. But lizards? Reptilians, Daryl said. We're a prison planet, said Jean, a grizzled looking teacher from Colorado. Have you read his books? You should. He exposes the Queen of England. She's a reptile. She's a dead reptile now. So here he's uh, off to meet some porn stars. And uh, we get, has the business changed much, I asked. I think there's less creativity, Margold said. There's more attempt to shock than to arouse. They can't really put the time into creating eroticism because hell, most of them don't even know how to spell eroticism. We're getting into circus tricks now, Anita Campbell said. Anita Cannibal said. Who can stick what up their ass? It didn't used to be like that. There's no suspense left in sex anymore, Margold said. It's all just right in the face. This industry is choked on its own freedom. We found ourselves so free that we thought we could get away with anything. It reminds me of Rome at the end of the Empire, the worst excesses at the Colosseum. If Bush gets re-elected, the next four years in this business will give us a chance to grow up. And then we, he goes to visit a guy called JJ, so he says, After that, the plan had been to visit JJ on the set of a film called Forced Entry, a rape-themed film which was being shot by Rob Black, a young director who was carving out a niche as a maker of horror porn. In the end, JJ didn't appear in the movie because his paperwork from the clinic vouching that he was free of HIV or venereal disease, which performers in porn have to keep updated on a monthly basis, hadn't been processed in time. Still, I went along to the shoot. Though not exactly shocking, the artless world offensiveness of the action seemed out of key with the light-hearted documentary we were trying to make. My director filmed me leaving the set. And then we get this. Back in 1998, I made a joke. Short of driving a train up someone's ass, I don't see where they can go with it. An industry veteran, Sharon Mitchell, told me. But the kink factor has just gone through the roof. It's almost like we have a show here in the States called Fear Factor, where they have secretaries and members of the public jumping off fucking buildings, you know? Think of that. Can you top this in the porn world? And that's an idea of the changes I've seen. It's just shocking. Ejaculating in women's eyes. That's a series where people ejaculate in each other's eyes. Because that stings, doesn't it? I said. Yeah, it stings. It's a very good way to get HIV or gonorrhea of the eyes, too. Okay, then he goes off to meet Ike Turner. So we get Ike was in a good mood and he reminisced about losing his virginity to a middle-aged next-door neighbour named Miss Boozy when he was just six years old. You know, man, today you guys talk about starting sex at that age. Ike put on a prissy voice. Oh, that's child molest... What's the word? Child molestation, Audrey said. Child molestation, man, that's crazy. I was enjoying myself. Miss Boozy was somewhere between 45 and 50 years old. And man, she would show me how to move and stuff. And like, we get over lunch, he shared stories about his days orgying in the 70s. One of the hazards of being a Don Juan, Ike said, was that you couldn't always remember the people you'd orgied with. It's not that you're being snotty, it's just they change. One girl walked up to me and said, you don't remember me? She did this on Geraldo's show. I said, no. She said, I orgied you for three days. You orgied with her? What does that mean, I asked. With glee, Ike said, that man, it were her and a lot more girls and I was doing them all. Have you ever orgied, Louis? Audrey asked innocently and pressed her wig with her hands. I don't think I ever have orgied, I said. You never had five or six women at one time, Ike asked. Hey, life passing you by. I remarked that I could see maybe orgying with two women at the same time, but that five or six seemed excessive. And then he goes to be visit some prostitutes and he learns that Wednesday is no hump day. And um, I just like this because these are some sort of trivial pursuit questions and um, I just wish he'd given the answers because I'm curious. 
At three or so, we headed back to the coffee shop. I bought her an expensive novelty coffee and we read out Trivial Pursuit questions. Was the first note broadcast by Sputnik 1 a B-flat, C-flat or D-flat? Who was the first US president to visit all 50 states while in office? And then he goes to meet some white supremacists and they're raging about Jewish people. And one of them goes, um, Prince Philip has Jewish ancestry, so Prince Charles does and little Harry. And I think that's why God's working it around so they can't become king. And obviously, again, I read this not long after Queen Elizabeth died and Charles became king. And Louis goes, I just don't see the big deal. When I think of Jewish people, I think of people like Wooly Allen and Bob Dylan and Marcel Proust, people I admire. And I've not realized that Dylan was, was Jewish. Just doesn't really come up, you know? Don't really talk about his religion, busy talking about his music. And we get this little um, excerpt between the racists and the anti-racists. Keep your brown hands off our white children. A bystander shouted, God created them that way. He also created yeast infections, you treat those. I mean, that little bit of, you know, I'm not saying I'm a racist or ag I agree with what I'm saying, but I, that's quite a clever little comeback. And he talks about a book that's kind of used against uh, Jews and he goes, Jews said it was a forgery. How can you have a forgery unless you have an original? Was Butler's bizarre logic. And then he meets some rappers and one of them says, uh, beefs in the hip hop community are just the same as corporate beefs, Coke beefing with Pepsi. It seems superfluous to point out that as yet no CEOs have been iced in executive drive-bys. And then he goes to see somebody who like makes a living selling conf conferences, those kind of conference scams where it's like, if you're like, just like me, you can be rich. I was surprised by the strength of my animus against Marshall, but the truth is I'd never really warmed him. In 2000, I'd attended a couple of his events, and even then I'd been troubled by the high-pressure sales practices. In the years afterwards, the Millionaire Mentorship Program had attracted so many complaints that the state of Nevada ended up prosecuting him for fraud. Among the details that came out, the so-called elite course available only to qualified pre-interviewed students had signed up a mentally handicapped man, offered money-back guarantees which it refused to honor under any circumstances, and employed a near-destitute millionaire mentor who moved in with one of his students then made off with his car and ten thousand dollars so he meets a guy called Sean Walker an ex-marine and ex-skinhead now the chief operating officer of the National Alliance Sean was a beefy man he looked to be in his mid-thirties he had a punctilious military manner his hair was clipped at the sides he was wearing a white shirt button-down collar a tie with a tie clip he mispronounced words President Putin was Putinin he said amalgation for amalgamation and coined the word sheerly a synonym, a synonym of purely I might not stoop to mentioning this with a national alliance not so fixated on notions of superiority and excellence. It seemed a failing that his personnel did not seem to fit the description of members of the master race. So yeah, all in all, The Call of the Weird by Louis Theroux. Very interesting read. I think you are going to enjoy it more if you've watched Weird Weekends because, again, he goes to meet a lot of the same people that are mentioning that. But I did enjoy it very much and um, would recommend it. I gave it a solid 4 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Call of the Weird by Louis Theroux. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.